God, All right, and for everyone coming over from Red's uh, stream that just ended a few moments ago, thank you and welcome. This, as you can see, is a follow-up to the wonderful Veterans Talk Weekly turned shit show from last night. Or, well, I guess for some of us we can call it earlier today <laughs> because we did continue interacting with the gentleman until... Just shy of 7 a.m. Eastern Time. No, it went on further. 18 hours. But no, well, no, you guys may have been talking after, but when I left, I went to bed between... No, he, he left around 7 a.m. He came back. Oh, he came back after I went to bed? Yes. Holy shit. Wow. So my part of like, it, it ended at about, about 7.30 in the morning. 15 hours. It went on for about 15 hours. That show, like, I missed completely on movie night, which I was already playing, planning on staying up for. Yeah. But from 8 p.m. all the way to, I want to say, 9 a.m. he was on. And 9 a.m. I was at work after getting an hour of sleep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he came back on, and we had a couple other people join back in. Um, had a lot of heart-to-hearts with him. Yeah, we definitely realized there are people who are, as famously said by Red, there are people who are dumb fucks by choice, and they deserve the ridicule, ridicule. but then there are people who are dumb fucks by disability or situation, and while you can point out that they are dumb fucks, they definitely deserve a different type of treatment overall, because... At some point, in some situations, it's not entirely your fault. While, yes, this gentleman has made decisions that have directly led to the situation that he's in, he's the type that he needs help. And Absolutely. And he needs positive influences in his life away from the computer screen, away from the screen of his phone that he does his recordings and postings from. And as we recognize this, we realize that we were in a position where we could help along that path. And I mean, going over last night and what occurred just in my mind, just going over that, there was a lot of like, we deal with a lot of fucked up people. I mean, take Pissy Pete, for example. But I never came across someone at first. There, there, there were a couple of flags that I noticed, but it didn't really occur to me because of just the constant, you know, people that we deal with on YouTube. Sort of just being used to a unique type of crazy, which is the flat earth. Yeah, which is why I will readily admit during the three and a half, a little under four hours that we were live, I was on board with him being a Poe because someone who has a large segment of the same military training that I have should not be easily duped by the flat earth the way he is. But then as we found out more about the situation and the potential for a psychosis on top of alcoholism. Ye and segregation from society and family on top of it. Yeah. 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 That's that, just... Yeah. The more that... I've never seen crazy like this. Yeah. And the more that we interacted with them and recognized this, the more we went from, okay, this is going to be a fun chew toy, to, oh, no, 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 no. No, he needs help. He needs people to actually put aside the bullshit and show him that there are those who want to see him be in a better state, not just physically, but mentally and also location wise. I mean, there were he was not in a safe place it, mentally or physically. Now. 
the and he the had house that he to a lot of weapons. Yeah, the the house that he was in, I've seen houses like that before, and it is, it, it's a warning sign for people who need help. I don't know if there was any part of that house that did not have some form of damage. Uh -huh. It was kind of actually amazing to see that his fridge was actually nice and clean. He had food inside of it. It wasn't destroyed, but his microwave was missing the door. Yeah, not and not just left open, but door completely was, broken off. He had one entire wall that all you could see was framework, and he had just basically destroyed through it. Um, yeah, he was in a bad place. It and, was like a crack house, but without the crackheads. Yeah. It was yeah. bizarre. And from talking with him about his past, about, you know, he said he had two DUIs while he was in the Navy. He's gotten a couple more since then because he had a, a breath machine hooked up to his car before he could even drive. And talking with him about he had no friends, he had no family, and any normal person would have bailed on us halfway through that, if not earlier. Yeah. But he kept coming back because I don't think he had anyone else. Yeah. Yep. And this is probably the most human interaction he's had in a long time. Well, and, and not just human, but also humane, because we got, we made it a point to not talk about the Flat Earth conspiracy stuff and just talk about how is he doing? What is he thinking? Like getting away from that sort of aspect and just treat him like a regular person not not a toy not someone or something to be manipulated or used which it would be nice to see from more people on this platform that recognize the warning signs and I think what helps people like myself Furball and a few others that we had on the panel last night um, recognize is the fact that we were supervisors and senior en enlisted and senior leadership in the military. There are certain uh, types of training that we get to begin to recognize if something may be going amiss away from work. And then having the integrity to then act on it appropriately without being too harsh. Yeah, and one thing that I could say is kind of heartwarming is that for as much shit as he put up with and all the discussions we had in and out of Flat Earth and all of that kind of stuff, by the time the overall conversation ended, I'd had a heart-to-heart -heart with him, uh, concern for his mental health. Uh, I remember somebody else talked to him for like a half hour about being in a bad mental state about their personal. Uh, they and them. Yeah, they and them talked to him for a, for a while. Oh, no, 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 no. no it was them. you um, wished. You wish, yeah. Wished, yes. uh, for like a half hour about, you know, I've been in a place like that myself. Let's get through it together. And after those talks happened, I don't even remember what the conversation changed to, but we all just started bullshitting about something else. And he continued. I think with it was us. my nipples. That that was certain, possibility. That was certainly part of it. Yes. Yeah, but by the end of it, he I think he felt like he was part of the group and he was in a good place. Yeah. So some people even reached out and exchanged contact information in order to call him this morning to make sure he's okay and to make sure he's in a good place. Yep. So, and and, and that's the thing is. Uh, one of the reasons why I started um, this weekly show with actually the help of uh, Team Skeptic, uh, we started on a Memorial Day special. So this upcoming Memorial Day will be one year solid of the show going on. And one of the presiding topics that we wanted to address overall and be able to actually talk about is just that. 
the mental health and physical health of the U.S. veterans after leaving the service, after leaving that sort of level of supervision and constant having someone looking, not necessarily looking out for you, but looking over you, and how we can go forgotten. We can go uh, and fall through the cracks once we leave the military and are and are in the civilian life. And that's where we need networks of support of fellow veterans and people who know enough and what to look for and how to handle the situation to just be a shoulder, be a helping hand, be a friendly ear if that's all that's needed at the moment, but just to not look at them and demonize them for what they may or may not have done while on active duty because certain jobs definitely do get into more bullshit than others as bull hobo who is a frontline infantry uh, for the danish military can attest to he has issues stemming from that service that i will never fully understand because i was never in that situation but we are here for him and anyone else in a similar situation who needs the help, who needs the support. And we also will know enough when it's beyond what we can do and will then reach out to the appropriate authorities and avenues to get people the help that they need. Absolutely. It, it was really scary last night, in a way. Uh, afterwards, we we had to get together and come up with a plan on how to end the conversation with him. Because we essentially didn't want to put him over an edge, in a way. And that that became surreal for me. Like, I've never experienced anything like that. Oh, uh, yeah. well, and one of our uh, usual panel regulars wasn't able to join last night due to internet issues, uh, Main Gun. And uh, Main Gun, I want to make sure you know, we, we fully expect this gentleman to become a more regular uh, panel member going forward because he needs this sort of camaraderie and interaction that is not centered around the flat earth. And that is going to be my request in the stipulation that I am going to try to hold people on is when he is on the panel, we are going to, we are going to talk about the flat earth as little as possible because we need to make sure that he is experienced and recognize that there are other things that you can talk about and there are other things going on and just building that rapport this way well yes we may be able to get him away from the flat earth in the long term now is not the time now is not the time to be our typical selves when dealing with someone who is so demonstrably wrong about certain subjects there's other for lack of a better term, there's other work to be done with him and for him first. And speaking of you wished, welcome back, good sir. I take it I'm either dead or in trouble. Oh, no, no, this is so uh, for background, since I, I guess you probably didn't hear all of it you wished, but uh. Uh, not long before we went on air, which was a little over 15 minutes ago now, I was on the uh, Red's Rhetoric went live and apologized to the gentleman we had on the show last night for how harshly he treated him uh, because he read Poe and treated him accordingly. However, before Red went live, he and I were talking on the phone and I gave him more of the information that came to light after we went off air and red was like oh oh not a po not a dumb fuck by choice i need to apologize and no this is this this goes 
was way deeper than Poe or DFBC. It's like I said last night, there are certain there that I saw that scared the crap out of me. Yep. And that says something. Yep. And that's where after having that uh, discussion with Red, he was like, you know what? No. We're getting off the phone. I'm going live. I am apologizing. And I was like, you know what? If you want us on, we I will let everyone know uh, who is on the panel to come in and they can do it as well. Or if you want to keep it short and sweet to your own thing, which is what he decided to do. I was planning on, I was thinking of doing a follow-up anyways, even before talking to Red about it. And well, what better way to uh, make sure the information that is relevant is out there. Because I mean, for people who actually pay attention to video descriptions, like I said, veterans health issues and especially mental health issues were a big reason why I started this live stream after having some discussions with team skeptic and a few others. So when an issue like this rears its head, the way it did, I am pleased at how all of us responded and acted and stepped in, but I don't want to leave the audience in the dark, especially for those who may be curious because of the way I ended the show rather abruptly. But after hours of interaction afterwards, certain things in the, in this period, I'm going to tell you that there are certain things that we can say. There are certain things that we can't say. We have to be cautious between yep. the two. Yep. So there are mental, there, there are undiagnosed, mental health issues that are present that we're we're not jumping to assumption or conclusion upon because none of us are mental health professionals no. i've had you know our, i've had uh, you know counseling services you know through christian university I'm seeing things that I could not, in a ministerial position, deal with. Okay, this goes beyond pastor or priest or whatever. It goes to need of mental health. And that's the reason why I did what I did today. I made some phone calls, made a report. I'm good with that. Okay. Does it mean that I'm not going to go back and check up on this individual? No, of course I'm going to go back and check up on this individual. Okay, I I would be remiss responsibility, knowing what I know and seeing what I saw last night, and not go back and check up on this individual. Yep. No, and I was thinking the same thing, which is why. Uh after finally getting some rest myself, it was even before I went to bed, I was like, you know what? Later today, even if it was off air, need to get in touch with everyone, see how everything's going to see if there's anything that I needed to be made aware of. But then as talking with Red and he was like, you know, what? I'm going live. I'm doing an apology. I'm like, you know what? You do that. I was thinking of doing an update for the audience as well, because they deserve to know. And because at the same time, I don't want people to think we just left it as is at the end of the show. No, that's not the type of people we are. We don't just end things and then move on. No, we we were we we were on until what uh, zero seven this morning, zero eight, something like that. I think eight a.m., maybe nine. It, yeah, uh, I think I left. A about seven, I left seven thirty this morning. I know, just I absolutely had uh, pig. I mean, I pretty much three hours at that point. Pig, pig. I uh, wanted Richard I, Ski in because he has something I, to I add. Hit the wrong button. Oh, okay. My bad. So <laughs> try again, Mister Ski. Uh, but yeah, it's. 
it's a tough you know, thing to I've come across. I've been there. I've been on the wrong, the wrong end of the bottle, and I've been on the wrong because I was on the wrong end of the bottle. You know, what was it, this morning that you put that out there? Uh, pardon. And that was when I said I'm coming back in, and that was at well, no, it was at four o'clock this morning because I think I caught pigs meth. Message at about four, and then I said, you know what? Throw me a link. Throw me a link back. Man, that was when I said, look, we need to we need to get away. We need to get around away from the globe earth debate. This is and once we get through the alcoholism, maybe we can start looking and seeing if there's Alcohol. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think that there is. Yeah, and that really is the uh, the big thing is that you have to recognize where proper priorities are in a situation like this. Could we have kept hounding them about the flat Earth and other conspiracy theories? Yes. However that would actually do more harm than good in this instance because this guy needs help in other areas first and foremost. Yes. So. And that's the that's going to be the thing for him to see is that in other areas. Yeah. You know, and that's think, going uh, to be that's going to be the hardest thing for him to personally accept. I do think having him back on once in a while for the weekly with with those very, very specific rules, like you mentioned, Jared, I think that that would be good. I, I wouldn't mind having him on and just chatting with him. Uh, and I think that's something that would be extremely beneficial for him. Very beneficial to him. Yeah. Having a group of guys wash out of the Navy all the way up to guys who have actually succeeded, all the way up to Schrodinger's cat. Having him see the work network available to him, I think will start to ground him a little. He can get to a point where he could accept mental health yep. from other places. Yep. Well, and the, what needs to have. No. No, and like people. No, more YouTube alerts. Um, but yeah, it's it's really disheartening to see someone um, kind of left in the wind in that sort of way yeah it you know watching turn and pike peak and valley it you know that that's, that's destructive you know just to a fellow veteran that's so destructive watching that happen to have been me yeah you know and to a large percentage, it almost became me. So, elation from family and everything else, I'm, you know, I don't really at least try to talk to him in a civilized manner. But, you know, it's a there's a delicate balancing act there. You know, he's never, he's never been able to get things off of his chest, it sounds like, dealing with certain members of his family that he needs to really have out there. He needs to he needs to unpack it all and he doesn't need to restuff the clean it when he unpacks it. If you understand what I'm what I mean there. Because at this point every time he he restuffs that box full of everything and then unpacks it again. And There's a uh, diagnosis terminology that refer. Uh, uh, you wish you're starting to break up a bit. We're having a hard time understanding you. <laughs> um, 
uh, in the meantime, if you who want to go ahead and refresh your connection, uh, we do have uh, Jay Brown and Richard Ski who have been quiet to this point. I'm going to let Richard go first. Right. <coughs> Sorry about this. My head's having me throat there. All I can say, all I can really say about it is, is that it just is a kind of worrying thing about this whole conspiracy thing in general, not just flat earth, but in general, just so people can be so susceptible to it and it can drive them to this point. It's a bit like, you know, as I said, just going down that rabbit hole and going deeper and deeper to the point of no return. That's there's so a difference sad. between going down a rabbit hole and having poor mental health. Yeah, and I understand that, but it doesn't help. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't there, help. there's not an outright causal relationship. However, yeah. you notice people who end up in the situation like this gentleman, it is easier for them to fall down the rabbit hole because of the mental health side of it. Yeah, it's more susceptible. Yeah. Yeah, but as I was saying, flat earth preys on people like him. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. No. And it's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Jared. No, Sorry. no, no worries. <laughs> it was, I was just going to reiterate why you know, I have that stipulation going that's forward. That's just basic, like, human interaction, though. That's the same thing can be said about Christianity or any other ideology. Yeah, it's so. not. It's not the idea, it's the person. Yes, it's it's not the theology itself, it's how fervent the person latches on to it. And well, the that, thing is, George, yeah. Well, and the that, thing is, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, uh, last quick point I'd like to make on that, since you brought up the religion side of it, Pig. If you actually look at the clinical definition and criteria for delusion, religion fits, but when you look at the actual DSM and everything that uh, provide the benchmarks to use for diagnoses of delusion, religion is the exception. It's kind of funny how that happens. Yeah, but of course you got to remember, Jared, we, we've been hearing a lot of people. We've heard a fair few people already, haven't we? Are probably showing signs of the, you know, they've shown showing this these exact signs as well. Not just not just this like this guy, you know. I, I think we can mean. I think I can think of one in particular that we know that we know both both we know both well, don't we? Yeah, there there are others, and actually there was one that I made comment of during the live show. Who uh, the behaviors, the mannerisms, and even some of the word choices were eerily similar. Um, yeah. and that, and that was Pete Shea. And I will admit, I give, I have given him a huge ration of shit in the past. And, and for, for a quick synopsis of that, at first I didn't think he was truly serious in a lot of what he was saying. So I gave him appropriate shit. And then when I got the sniff of, no, this is a mental health issue. I softened and started to show that genuine behavior. And I got huge vitriol back from him at which point it's like you know what you you care so little about yourself that when someone tries to display a bit of grace and humanity towards you who really has no reason to you're going to respond like that okay you really are not going to be receptive to it i'm not going to worry about my direct interactions with pj at that point however yeah. with this gentleman when I got that same sniff and my interaction softened up and Furball and Pig, you can attest to this, he did not respond in kind. He actually ended up softening himself and being more open and being more uh, easy to converse with, which is what allowed us to find out more of the details that we ultimately needed to know to get to the position that we are in now. Yeah, I think maybe I sometimes let myself get a little bit riled up by it at times. Uh, <laughs> but uh, one thing about PJ is I used to really dislike the guy, but now I can't help but feel sorry for him, even though he won't help himself. Well, that's the thing. We're not trained professionals. We're, we're yeah. just regular people. We're not trained or we do not have the knowledge to deal with that. And 
those interactions that person's going to have a lot of. Uh, especially with the environment that Pete Shea's in. So, I would consider that not up to us because of just the fundamental idea of professionals and having a facility made for that with a system in place for people like that. The problem is, the problem is, look at Big, a guy like him, he thinks the whole system is against him. Yeah, so that's... That's the problem. That's a lot within psychosis that occurs. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But so for those who are just joining us, this is a follow-up both to my previous live show um, on this channel that took place last last evening for the American uh, time zones but also extended well into this past morning and also uh, an indirect follow-up to the short apology video that Red just made live about 35 minutes ago. So, reiterating, if you are a dumb fuck by choice, you are going to be dealt with in kind. If you are a dumb fuck by disability or other situations that require a different style and a certain measure of help, then that is what we are going to push for and try to provide avenues for. So. so yeah, I mean... Go ahead, Jay. I was just going to say that, you know, I brought, I'm the one who brought him to Jared's attention. I'm the one who is ultimately responsible for this. And while I'm glad that we're able to help him and try and get him going the right way, and I agree with Jared that we need to put the, the flat earth stuff on hold when he's in on the stream with us. Um, I do feel a bit guilty about what we what we could have potentially caused him had we not been had Jared and Pig and others not been on um, as long as they were to help him, you know. I think we've got to just. I think the problem is, is though. I think we're maybe jumping to conclusions about these, about these, you know, about certain flat earthers. I think the majority of them are, of course, doing this by choice. But as I said, there's a few there that are not doing it by choice, and we, I think we have to be a little bit more cautious. You know, agree. Yeah. Yeah, that and as I say, I think everyone else has probably said that. Red has probably said that as well. And uh, it's just, a, it's just, a, it's, maybe this is a good thing that this type of thing has happened, and we were able to calm down the situation. That you know, that you were able to calm down the situation. Not, not myself personally. Mm -hmm. And, it, and in all honesty, you know, I feel like I owe Jared and Pig an, an apology too for, you know kind of bailing at the end there because I was to be honest when I left it was I was sheerly frustrated with the fact that Jared was trying to end the stream and people just kept jumping in and, and piling on it felt like so that's why I left you know and I I should have probably stayed in longer and I could have probably helped deal with the situation overall um, and I do feel like I you know I don't want to say I failed you guys but I do feel like I left you hanging you know and I just want to apologize for Jay. that it's okay, man. All you have to do is give me a reach around. I'll, I'll consider that um, I, you owe me because you owe me for a few of those too. And by the way, I won't be on. Are the arms um, long enough? <laughs> I won't be on on uh, Monday. I'll be closing at work, so hey, I, I think, won't be able to hear. You owe me for last night, this morning. <laughs> oh, he dropped. Either way, I just want to reach around, and I think that's a perfect spot to end it. Yeah. To you. Well, I was going to say, does anyone else have any uh, final messages? No, don't say anything. Just end it and reach around. No, no. <laughs> We're not doing I'm giving people opportunity, um, especially Furball, if you have any uh, final thoughts on this, or if pretty much it's all been said. Yeah, I think it's pretty much all been said. Uh, in the end, it turned out well. It could have gone very, very bad, and I think we've all learned some valuable lessons from it. And 
I'd like to think that future engagements, this will be in our mind at the beginning of those engagements before we go down the rabbit hole with somebody and just try and destroy them because they're idiots. And with that, for those people who have uh, come and joined us for the past almost 40 minutes, I do thank you. And uh, again, in want it to be known that, yes, we will ration out shit as deserved, but we're not always terrible people. Although our sense of humor often is. I think we've all become I'm a terrible rather... person, I'll admit it. <laughs> I think we've all become kind of cynical towards the whole flat earth thing over the last few years. And it's to be expected, but as I said, I think we have to exercise caution sometimes. And that's what, you know, that situation just shows that it just shows that. So that's all I can, that's all I've really got to say on it. Yeah. And with that, keep an eye out. We will be going live again in just a couple days. We will see.